Hi, I'm Tony, and in this video, we're going to review the new Beeline Moto 2 sat nav. So, the plan for today is instead of standing and yakking in the studio about what this is, what it does, I'm going to take it out on the road and show you to get an idea of whether it's any good or not. So, let's get on with it. All right, off we go. You'll see the Beeline Moto 2 just there in front of me, just behind the screen what one of those is, it uses my phone's GPS to give me directions on how to get to my destination. And I'm hoping to show you how it works today. The idea, what we're going to do today, is that I'm going to try and find a mystery location. I've had the Beeline Moto 2 for a couple of weeks now, but I've only used it for journeys where I already knew where I was going, just to get an idea of what it was like. And this morning our cameraman Joe, he set a location through my phone. All I know is that it's about 20 miles away in Huntingdon. But I'm hoping the beeline will make it easy for me to find the exact location and meet up with Joe there. So let's see how we get on. Oh, there's Joe. We found him. Perfect. Nice job. Well, that was really easy. Dead simple to follow. Plenty of time in advance of all the turnings. Really clear, obvious what I needed to do. Roundabouts, it told me the exit number. Just simple junctions told me to turn to the left or the right. Really easy, got here with no problem. And that's not always my strong suit, finding places even with a sat nav. So well done Beeline Moto 2. So Beeline Moto, has been around for a few years. This is the upgrade version. And what it is, is essentially allows you to use your phone as a sat nav without having to put your phone on the bike. So Beeline Moto, the app on your phone is essentially the sat nav part. And then this device connects to that via Bluetooth and it displays the instructions that are on your phone. So why would you not just buy quad lock or SP connect or ultimate add-ons and put your phone on there? Various reasons. Those clamp mounts can add up by the time you've bought a cover, by the time you've bought a way of attaching it to the bike, by the time you've put the anti-vibration device in there to stop it ruining your camera, by the time you've found a way of powering it up. So expense on those can add up, so can complication. This is just two rubber O-rings that go around any rail on your bike that is then clipped to your bike and it shows you where to go. Other reasons you might not want to put your phone on your bike. You might be worried about theft. You might be worried about it getting wet. You might also think that an iPhone 15 looks really incongruous on, say, a Bonneville or a Street Triple. You just want something that's much more stripped back and a much more simplistic look. So on the main screen, it covers the absolute basics. It shows you how far it is until your next turn. It shows you where your next turn goes. If your next turn's a roundabout, it tells you its exit to come off at. It also has a little slider bar on the bottom and that shows your progress through the journey, shows how far the way you are through. If you want a more precise piece of info on that, like an ETA, then use the rocker switch to pull down to the next screen, which shows you what time it is now, what time you'll arrive, how many minutes it is until you arrive and how many miles you've got left to go. On the next screen down by hitting the rocker switch again, it's effectively a GPS, highly accurate, speedo and also gives you your average speed and a little ride out readout underneath that the next screen down is a compass mode which also shows you the mileage that's been elapsed since you set off also it shows you the time of day and then the next screen is a really useful monitor for your battery so it shows you the battery level the battery life on this is 10 hours from a single charge and it's got a usb-c charger on it when it's simple like on this bike it's got a usb port so i can charge it while i'm riding and it's showing me that I've got also 60% battery left on my phone. You're going to get more life from your phone as a sat nav, I would say, from the battery by running it this way. So that's another reason why you might go for this. The last screen is a ride menu that lets you end the ride through this. You would normally end the ride through the phone app, but you can also do it from here. You can stop the ride, so like a pause, or you can also skip waypoints if there's a point in that where you just think, no, let's just move on. So that's that screen and then we're back round to the basic navigation screen. The next stage is to put a GPX file into here and test the route down to a village called Kimbolton 
We're hoping to have some lunch, so let's see how that goes. Well, uh, I've not even set off, and I found my first slight issue with the GPX upload mode. If you don't know what GPX is, it's a type of file that lets you plan a route on your computer, save it to the sat-nav, and then you can follow that route on your bike. I plotted a route on my laptop last night, sent it to my phone, and now I've just imported it to the Beeline app so the Moto2 can guide me on that route. On posh sat-navs, if you put a route in and you're not exactly where that route starts, there's usually an option to get the sat-nav to take you to the start of your route. This beeline doesn't give me that option. So my next route starts at Huntingdon Railway Station. I chose that because I didn't know where Joe was going to send me this morning. So when I plotted this route on my computer yesterday, I didn't know where I'd be starting from. So I put in the railway station and I thought the beeline would just give me the option to go to the start of the route, but it doesn't. So what I've done now is put the railway station in as my destination and then when I get there I'll load up the GPX route and I'll try to follow it from there. I think most people would probably want to start GPX route where they already are so this might not be a major issue but there's a reason why expensive sat navs have the option to navigate to the start of a GPX route and that's probably because people want to use it. And this doesn't have that option. That's just something you might want to bear in mind if that's the sort of thing you do with your sat now. Okay, station found, GPX route plotted in, and it's happy, I think. We'll find out. It's gone wrong already. Maybe I turned the wrong way, but the unit's gone completely blank. Well, that's not exactly a roaring success for the GPX route option. It seems that if you deviate slightly from the route, Beeline doesn't know how you to put you back onto it. And this is a bit of a fail, I'd say. I can't follow this. What I'm going to do now is stop, put Kim Bolton in as a destination and I'll follow the fun route there to hopefully meet up with Joe. I'm just going to go back to what Beeline is obviously a little bit better at. Okay, I'm nearly in Kim Bolton now. Beeline is much better like this and it works well. It's still easy to follow and everything's very clear. I've also tested the voice instructions now. They're a paid for extra if you subscribe to the upgraded app. They're very clear as well. Now, you might also now see on the main navigation screen that it's now got a little speed limit symbol, which wasn't there this morning. Until yesterday, that symbol was there all the time. Then it disappeared when I updated the system yesterday like the phone app asked me to. I've spent most of today trying to work out where that symbol had gone. Now I know what happened. When I updated it yesterday, the system switched that feature off and then I had to turn it back on by going into the settings. So now I've got that back and I've got the speed limit info again. The idea is that the white band around the number grows the nearer I get to the speed limit. And when I reach the limit, that white band around the number becomes a full circle. And then if I exceed the limit, that circle around the outside turns red. And then a new white band appears around the outside of the red one to show how much I'm exceeding the limit by. Anyway, let's get on and try and find Joe.
Okay, right, we've found a quiet location on the other side of Kim Bolton to come and try and sum up the Beeline Moto 2. For following for directions, I think this is a really, really helpful, handy little gadget that would actually improve my life on the road. I don't like having my phone attached to the handlebars. So having something like that, that I can just strap to the bike and it will effectively let me use my phone as a sat nav without having the phone out and on display is really, really helpful. Now, the speed limit display, which stays on the main navigation screen if you turn it on in the settings on the phone app, now that's a problem for me at the moment. It's been inaccurate too many times for my liking. Even on just this short stint from Kim Bolton, there were places where it was telling me the speed limit was 60, but it was really 40 or really 30. And sometimes it's the other way around that it's telling you it's 30 when it's actually 60. That's something that Beeline are going to need to work on, but it's still quite new. This unit isn't even out actually out yet so we'll give them a bit of benefit of the doubt on that and hopefully they will update that the gpx function in terms of importing gpx functions that for me really didn't work as soon as i got away from that route that had been plotted in it just didn't know what to do and i didn't know what to do that's the point of having a navigation thing on there is that it's telling me what to do so that's something that i think beeline needs to work on some way of navigating back to the route or to the route at the beginning would be really helpful. So I think people who are used to being able to import GPX routes into more advanced sat navs like TomTom Tom or Garmin, which I have been able to do, I have done in the past quite successfully. So I'm not a complete moron when it comes to this sort of stuff. I think that functionality would really help this for people who are expecting those kind of advanced features. As long as your expectations are relatively simple, as long as you don't want this to be as powerful as a Garmin Zumo XT, then I think the Beeline Moto 2 is great. It's coming out soon. It's going to be £180 in the basic Moto 2 plastic surround, which you see, which is the one we've reviewed today. There's also going to be a metal version, which is £199.99, so £20 extra for that. So overall, I think this is going to be a big success. I think there's a lot of reasons why people are going to want this. We've seen quite a lot of interest already. So I hope that tells you what you wanted to know about the Beeline Moto 2. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.